two weeks ago I was on Twitter and I noticed that Andy underscore Notion has shared his academic research template for Notion. And this caught my interest because I've been investigating how I can uh, use Notion along with Obsidian in more useful ways, how I can find the balance between those two tools that I'm using. And also because I've been doing some part-time biblical studies and so with a view of maybe in the future doing more of that and doing more academic research um, who knows and i thought um, you know this could be interesting to investigate it could help me with my uh with my postgraduate studies as well so i ended up uh, buying the template and you can see it here uh, from gumroad and i thought i'd give you a quick tour and then show you how I've kind of adapted it for my own system, as you can see there. So, first of all, uh, when you buy it, this is where you'll be taken to. You'll be taken to a web page, which gives you the option to duplicate the template, and that will then allow you to import it into your own Notion database. So you need to set up a Notion database if you haven't done one already, but uh, then you can import it straight there, as you would any other template. I'll probably have a link to how you can do that process. Now, first of all, you have the dashboard, which gives you some important views that you may want to look at. You've got your tasks, you've got research projects, navigation, which can take you to some sub pages, which are kind of hidden, uh, reference literature, uh, and then conference dates. And finally, there's a bit of uh, you know copyright uh, information here, things that you need to know for, uh, for copyright, and also an introduction to explain the template and, and, and welcome you to it. So let's dive into some of these features, starting with the research projects. So the first thing that we see here is, is like you can create a research project and we see it in a status board, which takes it from the idea all the way to published um, or, or having no status. And you can view this in different ways. You can see it as a, uh, as a table as well. So you can just see the projects, the ideas that you've had there. But you can also see it in terms of your abstract deadline, which is very useful to know, like if something's coming up soon, you can view it that way. Now, diving in a bit more detail, when we look at a research project, we get this amazing template that gives us a ton of metadata, but also some guidelines for creating a research project, something that can help us as we're creating this project and going along. Uh, and there's some really nice little tweaks here. So for example, manuscript deadline, you have it here, and then you have a formula which shows you how many days are left until that's due. You can add literature notes connected to your research project that you can find there. You know, if you've got a co-author, you can attach them to this one. Uh, related tasks as well. Um, lots, lots of little details, all sorts of met metadata. And then, you know, then we go into the project, we can see you have to define it, you can attach your tasks, you've got notes, uh, notes which you can add for the process that you're going through, and then your references there. So it's, it really groups everything together. You'll be able to easily access um, all the information you have on your project, and also it gives you a bit of guidance and structure, which is so powerful. So, and I also just love the cover, showing the cover images there. Uh, is quite nice. Now, um, I guess the next part, let's look at some literature. So again, this gives you the status and it gives you a master reference view that you can look at. And when we look at the status, it, it's a process again that can take you through uh, finding an article or a journal that you need to get, uh, reading it a couple of times, completing your reading, and then you have you know, all the details again on, on, a, on a piece of article including the authors that it's attached to, when it was, uh, you know, your your link to access a PDF or, or in a journal database, DOI number. Then you've got, um, you know, your summary, which you should write yourself. Um, and again, just like the, um, the academic paper, we come into some guidance for, for reviewing uh, the article. So I love this little touch here, just keeping a citation at the top in easy reach. And now admittedly, if you're using like a citation manager, which you should do, then maybe that's not so useful, but, but there we go. Uh, and we have a summary here. So you write a summary of it, talk about the aims of it, going through the main arguments, methodology and stuff like this. So let's look at the reference figures and tables. 
in this section we have a gallery view of diagrams or figures um, that may be useful for our research. I love this little little touch, it's, um, especially sharing it in the gallery view primarily rather than in the table view. Um, that's a way that you can easily find uh, or see some of these views which may be useful uh, for your work, for your research, depending on what you're doing. Now, uh, coming out of the reference literature, we have the conference view. And this, of course, is very useful if you've got, if you're going to conferences, uh, you can see them as a calendar, you know, switch month, change it to a list view and see the, the conferences when they're coming up. And again, there's metadata about like the dates, if you're attending, um, you know, if, uh, if, um, if you have a manuscript submitted or an abstract deadline that you have to get to, and you can see that in the calendar view as well. So it can help you stay on top of when you have a, a project coming up, when you have a conference, if you go prepare something to present there. So that's how Andy created it. Now I want to show you how I've done some basic adaptions uh, to try and see how this might work for myself. And I haven't, I haven't done too much here because uh, as you can see from my first task, I have to pick my next course that I'm going to take along. Um, but uh, I came up with this idea for a research project. And it's just an idea at the moment. It's Paul and natural theology. So for the context, I was reading Romans. I noticed how in Romans 1, uh, Paul talks about how like uh, that God is obvious to people and that people should, um, uh, so they have no excuse. And he, he points to kind of these ideas of nature, how God has been revealed through nature, which is very much in line with like a view of natural theology. However, then we go to, I think it's Romans 10, where he talks about how uh, how can people believe if they have not heard? And so he seems to be contrasting that by saying that um, you, know, you, you must have heard to be able to believe. So, so there's that tension. So, so what is Paul's view? Is it, is it that it's, it's obvious? Does he have this natural theology? Is it more refined? Is it more nuanced? Or is it actually more on the other side that actually he believes that, um, that there needs to be divine revelation, that there needs to be spoken revelation? So this is an idea I've had uh, for a project that I want to investigate. So I've set the aim. I want to investigate Paul's view of natural theology, how it compares to the culture of the time as well, and sits in situ between Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas. So this is an idea as well, because you know natural theology came about from uh, Aristotle. He talks about these um, three different views of, 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 uh, of theology, political theology, natural theology, and uh, philosophical theology, I think it was. And of course, Thomas Aquinas is like the guy of natural theology, uh, pointing to these arguments for, for the history of uh, the evidence of God in nature. So where does Paul's view sit there? Um, how does he compare to others? And what what is it? And what, how does it compare? I think that's very interesting. You know, is it influenced by others? Um, what what is the conversation he's having with culture at the time as well? Is he pushing back on certain ideas? Is he affirming other ideas? Uh, so one of my first tasks here, of course, is I need to find an academic book on this topic. Uh, another one would be to re-read Romans. Oh, actually, I've, uh, I've prepared this task already. Uh, read Romans again, find comparisons uh, from Roman 1 and Roman 10. You know, see if there are any other uh, parts of Romans where, where it seems to be confirming this. Um, maybe I should just also check my uh, Pauline, uh, whoopsie, wrong order, Pauline theology books for natural theology. That would be another good way to see if I, if I have a book, if I have some information on this. Uh, I could check my, uh, you know, I need to read, find, a resource on Aristotle's view of natural theology. That'd be another good one to do. Uh, I can review my my notes on that as well. I guess he should be careful, that, shouldn't he? Uh, and then again, I guess I guess I also need to like read up, uh, find resources on Thomas Aquinas's. Uh, natural theology, like a summary or something like that. So, I've, so I've got a few tasks there, and now I can add um, some some details about the ethic. 
finding a book, I think that's that's pretty low effort. I guess it's medium priority. Uh, it's medium priority. Um, it's low effort as well. I guess that's high priority actually. Go to the original source. Uh, again, low low effort f for these. I guess. Um, yeah, I don't feel like reading is is very high effort. Um, I guess that's medium priority. Find a resource, low effort. Again, medium priority. Uh, yeah, medium priority. I think. Uh, yeah. So so I've added a few things there. Now I can start adding some notes and, and points like this. But because I've done that, it's updated my task list. So I can see my task list there. I've got these new tasks in there. Uh, so that's that's a start on things I could do. I've also started, to, I've made some changes to my author database based on some common authors that I, I know about. Uh, so I started to prepare that and I'll have to see how, how that goes. I can add some more there. I can start filling it in. So, I mean, this has been a real whistle stop tour of this database. I find it interesting and I'm, I'm not sure how it will fit in with my own way of working but sometimes it's fun to experiment with something like this see how it works see the problems and, and the benefits of it and then we can identify opportunities in other areas and I've been thinking of some other ways that I can use Notion to help me with my work uh, with, with studies with, with sermon preparation as well and how I can contrast that with Obsidian so you know, subscribe if you haven't already if you want to see how that comes together and, and some of the options that I present there. Hope you've enjoyed this video if you're interested in this template you can get it from the link below in the comments and also leave a comment tell me what you like about this what you don't like about this if you're using Obsidian and Notion together and how you balance that and I will see you in the next video.